Hello. Uh, hello, Mr. Buffett and Mr. Munger. Thank you so much for your insights, teaching, and being great role models. My name is Eric Soberger, a violinist based in New York City. A question for both of you is related to psychological biases. Through Berkshire Hathaway's operations, you get a very good read on macroeconomic factors, yet Berkshire does not make investment decisions based upon macroeconomic factors. How do you control the effect of information, such as knowing macroeconomic factors, or the anchoring effect of knowing stock prices, because after a while, it's hard not to once you've analyzed them before? Um, and how does that influence your rational decision making, whether you should ignore it or whether you should try to use it in a positive way? Well, Charlie and I are certainly, uh, we read a lot. So we, and we're interested in economic matters and political matters for that matter. And so we, we know a lot, uh, or we're familiar a lot, I should say, with almost all the macroeconomic factors. That doesn't mean we know where they're going to lead. We don't know where zero interest rates are going to lead, but we do know what's going on if we don't know what what is likely to... Warren, there's a confusion here. Oh. It says microeconomic factors. Oh, micro we pay a lot of attention to those. Oh, yeah. If you talk about macro, we don't know any more than anybody else. Yeah. He summed it up. The, the, in terms of the businesses we buy, and we, when we buy stocks, we look at it as buying businesses, so they're very similar decisions. Uh, we try to know all, or as many as we can know, of the microeconomic factors. We, I like looking at the details of a business, uh, whether we buy it or not. I mean, I just find it interesting to study the species and and that's the way you do study it. So I, I don't think there's any any lack of interest uh, in those factors or denying the importance of them. Uh, so I, am I getting at this question or not, Charlie? Well, I, there are, hardly could be anything more important than the microeconomics. Yeah. That is business. Uh, that business and microeconomics are sort of the same term. I guess uh, microeconomics is what we do, and macroeconomics is what we put up with. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the anchoring effect, I mean, how do you deal with that as well? Um, well, we're not anchored to what we're, we're ignoring. Ah, I see. Mm. <laughs> but we, Charlie and I are the kind that literally find it interesting in every business. Well, we like to look at microfactors. If, if we buy, when we buy a C's candy in 1972, you know, there may have been 140 shops or something. We'll look at the we'll look at numbers on each one, and we'll, we'll watch them over time, and we'll see how third year shops behave in the second year. And we, we, we really we really like understanding businesses. It's just it's it's interesting to us, uh, and some of the information is very useful, and some of it may look like it's not it, it, uh, helpful. But who knows when? Some little fact stored in the back of your mind pops up and really does make a difference. So uh, we're fortunate in that we're doing what we love doing. It. I mean, we love doing this like other people like watching baseball games, and which I like to do too. But but they just the very act, every pitch is interesting, and and uh, every moment, you know, when whether the guys, you know, a double steal is interesting or whatever it may be, and uh, so that's what our activity is. Is really devoted to, and, and we talk about that sort of thing. And we try and avoid the worst anchoring effect.